At Staples Business Advantage, our experts can help you find furniture that fits any design and budget, while AI can recommend products based on preferences, generate 3D models for visualization, and optimize space planning for office furniture. Take advantage of our team's eye for style and design. And my eye for, wait, I have no eyes only algorithms. Let Staples Business Advantage use today's latest innovations plus our team's experience to make furnishing an office space easier for you. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human. Shares for beginners. Phil Muscatello and FinPods are authorized reps of Money Sherpa. The information in this podcast is general in nature and doesn't take into account your personal situation. We've got a health crisis. COVID goes back, if you can all remember, not that long ago. So we have a health crisis. And one of the problems in Australia was people weren't taking the vaccine. And so the government was very concerned about that. So the government undertook quite a lot of research to understand why. And so there the government used online market research to do surveys really well, understand the different segments and then deliver the right messages to those segments. And then we know how that turned out. So a a positive thing. G'day and welcome back to Shares for Beginners. I'm Phil Muscatello. What is market research and how is it changing in the digital age? Today we're taking a look at a unique company on the ASX called Pure Profile. And joining us is CEO and Managing Director Martin Fills. G'day Martin. Hi, Phil. Great to be here. Pure Profile Limited provides profile marketing and insights technology services for marketers, researchers and publishers in Australia and internationally. So let's break that down. What's that mean to an ordinary person? What's market research? Yeah, look, market research, it's a it's a funny world. I first discovered it in the year 2000 and I was it was like I discovered chocolate. And it was like, wow, hang on, there's all of this data, there's all of this information. Surely every company should have access to this and should know about their audiences so that they can be better. And that's really what market research is. Market research enables companies to understand, or organisations, because it could be government, it could be education, as well as brands, companies, to understand their audiences better. It's in effect the evaluation of the viability of a, could be a product, it could be a message, um, it could be winning an audience from a competitor or retaining an audience from yourselves. Um, and it allows companies governments etc to better target it's 137 billion us dollar market it's huge but it's a market perhaps you haven't heard of but every product that you and your listeners today touch own whether it's your car an advert that you see on television clothing that you are wearing drinks that you are drinking Every company has conducted some level of market research to ensure the product is right. Maybe the messaging that you are seeing is is correct so that they are more successful and you get something relevant. It touches every part of our lives. Some people of a certain age might remember going to those market research meetings. You know, I've I've went to a couple where you'd earn 50 bucks to go and answer some questions where you'd be looking at a particular product and giving feedback on the colours and the, um, the typeface and all of that sort of thing. But it's moved on a bit from then, hasn't it? Just a little bit. um, (laughs) I'm just showing my age, am I, Matt? (laughs) Um, Look, as everything has moved on, it has moved on. The the original market research was going back to pen and paper. You would be stopped in the street and asked to survey. Uh, Maybe you would receive something through the post and it might be a really long thing that you fill out. Can you... what? radio stations have you been listening to or what products have you bought and so it's all on it was all on recollection and again multi-million dollar decisions made on somebody trying to remember yeah last week what uh drinks did i have at home oh yeah i had a tea on tuesday and i most probably had four teas and had a coffee and had a beer or wine or whatever and so it was based on recollection and it's moved on And it's moved on, especially around about 2000-ish with the internet. 
And what you found is much of what was offline research, that pen and paper, um, face-to-face type interview, moved to online. And suddenly I was able to get a much larger audience and a much wider audience through their computers or through their, um, it wasn't their phones at that stage, it was through their computers who wanted to share views and, and differences. And so the big changes that we've seen in market research to date have been around 2000 when we all moved to online and so suddenly as I said it lowered the cost increased the speed um, increased the people the the variety of people I was talking to or able to talk to as a brand uh, more people could share their views and share their input then mobile which came out a little bit later so what are we talking about 2005 2006 and everything started to go mobile and so again market research turned to mobile so suddenly whether somebody was answering online surveys sitting at home and it was 6 p.m or 7 p.m or or uh, maybe a lunch break at work or something suddenly i could do research on the bus and I could do uh, research in the moment. So that was then the big change. And then the change that's occurred since then to date is combining that data. So more and more data is available. So for example, you might have a flybys card and you go shopping in uh, Coles with your flybys card, or it could be Bunnings or Kmart or wherever, but you go in Coles and you buy certain products. Now Coles know a little bit about you because you have a card. They know what products you've bought. It's been a fair exchange. That's what market research is all about. Market research is all about a fair exchange. You will share some information and in return you will get something back. If it's with an organization like Pure Profile, it would be money you get back for sharing that information uh, or those views. And with somebody like Coles, you're using Flybus cards, you get cash back and points, et cetera, et cetera. So Coles are able to say, well, we know you just bought soy milk. We'll give you what's called a trigger survey. We'll ask you what you thought about soy milk. And that's no different to you might take your car for a service and then a day later you receive a research or a survey that says what did you think about our offering or you buy a new product etc so that's how market research has really started to change it started to change that we know what you did because you've got a relationship with that brand and that brand is directly able to ask you what did you think and the importance of that is they get immediate feedback about their service so I can see straight away my customer service maybe i just had my car serviced i got a uh, survey back that said what did you think about that so my car had to go all the way to liverpool to be serviced Uh, they have branches all around so maybe they can see liverpool customer service is actually better than newcastle customer service or sydney customer service etc and so they get immediate feedback that they can make business decisions on and also because you know somebody that's bought a product you could ask them, why did you buy that product? Why did you buy that brand of soy milk over some other brand of soy milk? Why did you perhaps look at that television show instead of some other television show? Or that we saw you saw that advert. Did you have a higher brand recollection? Maybe I'm getting a little bit too deep. I'm not sure here, Phil. But um, what we're understanding is that brands will be more relevant to you the more they can understand you so where i get i'm in market research world we don't share any personally identifiable information it's, it's called it's PII. anonymized it's called it's anonymized all anonymized information, correct yeah. so none of that is shared where i get frustrated is going back to where we had the whole privacy world started or concerns started around Cambridge Analytica with Facebook sharing. They did two things. One, Facebook shared with them personal data, which overall isn't an issue because, again, there is a famous line that if the product is free, you are the product. And so what that means in the online world is if you've signed up to something that costs you no money, but I'm receiving, again, an exchange, a fair exchange, I'm receiving something back. So I'm using Facebook. There's no cost to use Facebook. How does Facebook make its money? It delivers you adverts and it sells your data. Now, in selling anonymized data, there's no issue with that because you're going to get a better experience on Facebook 
if I've got more relevant offers, more relevant ads, if my content is more relevant to what I'm doing, then that's a fair exchange. I've got a free product and in return, I'm giving data and in return, they're giving me a better experience. Where it goes wrong is what Cambridge Analytica did was Cambridge Analytica then started to manipulate people based on the what they'd received and what they'd found out, which is really bad. And uh, we now have GDPR in Europe. We have the ACCC here. We have California privacy law, which really is nothing to do with us because we don't share. It's all anonymized data and we've got permission from our members who have joined our program. But it's stopping a Cambridge Analytica occurring in the further. And what it's given a, a bad name for is privacy, full stop. And it's a shame because my user experience is better if somebody can analyze my data of what I'm interested in, what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, how long I spend, etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, so presumably your, your soy milk that you buy is the example. It's going to improve in terms of satisfying your needs, flavor, whatever outcomes you're looking for based on the research that a company is undertaking. Very good point. So if, I'm not saying Coles use their data in this way at all, but we'll carry on that as an example. So let's say Coles knows I've bought so this particular brand of soy milk, and they also know how much I paid for that particular brand of soy milk at the checkout. They then can let the competitors of that soy milk brand know that I'm a soy milk drinker. So that now gives them all the opportunity of sending me messages to say, hey, we're better. Perhaps we're better. We're creamier. We're milkier. We're lower sugar. We're more calcium or whatever else it is. So suddenly I'm getting, I like soy milk. I'm now being given research or information about other brands that I might try out. They also might say, hey, we'll give you special offers to come and try our soy milk instead of somebody else's soy milk. So now I'm saving money. So I've learned about new brands. I've maybe found a new favorite that is a bit milkier and a bit more to my taste, and I'm paying less money for it. So that is an example of my behavior and that data, that information being really, really well used and giving me a better experience. But in turn, what has it done? It's enabled organizations perhaps to increase their sales and um, to win competitive market share. And now I also think, well, that's good at Coles as well because Woolworths doesn't do that. Now look at Coles, they're recommending different brands to me, they're recommending different prices to me, they're giving me offers, so my loyalty to Coles has gone up, perhaps I've changed soy milk, so it's a win-win for everybody, and that's a perfect example of market research and being well used. And then you add to that, so that's what we call passive data, but you don't know why somebody has chosen that particular soy milk. So that's where Pure Profile comes in. So one, we can provide that data that tells what people do, but what we really do is we help brands understand why by asking them online surveys. So we can say that particular soy milk has been bought and the brand says, okay, before I contact them, I wanna know why did they buy that? So now we survey everybody who bought that particular brand to say, why do you drink soy milk? And perhaps it's a health thing. I, I, I've got a lactose intolerance. Um, perhaps I'm trying to lose weight. Oat milk, for all your listeners, has a lot more sugar than soy milk. So perhaps I'm dropping oat milk to go to soy milk because I'm trying to lose weight. Perhaps it's because of a cost thing. Perhaps the, So there can be a myriad of reasons. And so once the brand understands what the reasons are, their messaging can be tailored. It's the same product, but I've now got tailored messaging depending on who the user is. At Staples Business Advantage, our experts can help you find furniture that fits any design and budget, while AI can recommend products based on preferences, generate 3D models for visualization, and optimize space planning for office furniture. Take advantage of our team's eye for style and design. And my eye for, wait, I have no eyes, only algorithms. At Staples Business Advantage, furnishing your office is easy. And with the best warranty in the business, we're committed to you now and down the road. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human. Super is one of the most important investments you'll ever make. But how do you know if you're in the best fund for your situation? Head to lifesherpa.com.au to find out more. Life Sherpa, Australia's most affordable online financial advice. 
So can you run us through some case studies of how this has worked? And I know you've prepared three cases beforehand, and they're really interesting cases. So um, yeah, let's just run through them now. Yeah, thanks, Phil. Uh, it is a good question, and it is one you told me beforehand, so I have three cases. Um, <laughs> government. Uh, I'll give a good example of uh, government research around COVID hesitancy. We've got a health crisis. COVID goes back, if you can all remember, not that long ago. So we have a health crisis. And one of the problems in Australia was people weren't taking the vaccine. And so the government was very concerned about that. So the government undertook quite a lot of research to understand why. So again, I'm going to deliver online surveys to understand what the drivers are for users. And what came out of that research was there is an absolute group of people who would never have any vaccine at all you're not going to be able to give any messages to that group you can continue to try but you're not going to convert them and then if you look at people that were were willing to take the vaccine what were their drivers they haven't yet but what were their drivers so it could be a fear about the health they've heard that there are uh, health challenges about certain vaccines they that can be one so now if that's to that group i can start to give uh detail and information about no it's fine don't worry about it the health is proven millions of people are taking this around the world you'll be fine another group wants perhaps a little bit more of a push so to be able to travel maybe they want to do international travel so i would take the vaccine if i was able to travel so again talking to that group about messages what countries are open how i could travel maybe simple things like going out to the pub going to work etc so you can again see a single population needs to have different messages because we all have different drivers in our lives and so there the government used online market research to do surveys really well understand the different segments and then deliver the right messages to those segments and then we know how that turned out so Mm, a, mm. a positive thing another good example is op- the Optus breach all for what happened with Medicare and uh, Medibank, sorry, and Optus, obviously, and the effect that that had on individuals and how the, the data breaches. But what Optus did was it happened on a Friday, it happened to be a holiday weekend in Victoria because I think it was the AFL weekend. It was and, where all the data got hacked, wasn't it? All of Optus's data and, got and hacked. Yeah. their headquarters as well. Yeah, uh, the data was hacked actually everywhere, but they had quarters there. Mm-hmm. So they sprang to life and so over that weekend they conducted a a great deal of market research across their audiences to understand what were their concerns the the use of their data what data had been taken identity theft at one extreme level etc etc and so in 48 hours or so a large amount of research was carried out by optus And then that was used in their messaging on the Monday. So you've got a crisis on the Friday, understand the audience over the weekend, deliver the right messaging on the Monday to that audience. It worked really well, as well as it possibly could do in that situation. And Optus have certainly come out of that well. Making making the best out of a bad situation. And their customers have confidence. Yeah. And then we've got an example of it not being well used or it not being used at all. For those of you um, perhaps who are aware, Budweiser Light in America just used Dylan Mulvaney for a campaign. Dylan Mulvaney identifies as a woman and that didn't work well. And the traditional drinkers of Budweiser Light, Budweiser Light, which had been all about cowboys and riding horses and guns and whatever else in America, their user base went, what's going on? We don't we don't relate to these messaging, this campaign that's being held. And huge amount of backlash. And almost overnight, it took off $6 billion from their market cap. If they'd conducted a little bit of user research first to understand perhaps if that campaign would work, then they wouldn't have lost $6 billion. And then very quickly, they've tried to launch new campaigns for which you'd imagine they have conducted research, which is going back to their traditional values, but it'll take time for them to get that brand back. So market research should be done. It seems to be on belief that they would go with such a radically different campaign without conducting that kind of research to start with to see how it would be if it would be effective or not it does it is quite incredible i think a couple of people have been put on leave i've seen in the news from um budweiser regarding this and yes it's 
so easy to do market research it's so easy and fast to at least get a pulse on your of your users etc or your customers in, incredible they didn't but yeah a couple of examples where it's worked and examples where it hasn't and one another one which you might see a lot of if you watching television or actually any medium at the moment uh, volvo they're doing a lot of advertising at the moment around electric vehicles etc volvo is chinese owned however all of the adverts are swedish accents and swedish scenery and giving again what do users like they like that impression that it's the design and yeah, the, the, style. the perception that volvo has always had for safety and design style and being swedish <laughs> and being swedish so um again market research being reused really really well to build a brand um, understand the audience and understand what the reasons are that people would buy volvo over a hyundai or whatever does pure profile sorry i'm just going a bit off topic here but does Pure Profile ever have to have tough conversations with clients and say, okay, you've you really I- invested in this idea of how you want to approach market and you, you're saying, we really don't think it's going to work. Absolutely. And occasionally you do have clients who will say, well, that doesn't fit with what we're, what we're expecting to do or we'd like to do. Can you make the data different? <laughs> and, and the answer is no the data is the data it's very very few I mean a handful of clients in sort of 20 years the majority it's close to the mark they know their clients they know their business throughout this is really final verification that we were on the right idea perhaps some tweaking of some ideas so very very seldomly do you have something which is you know a complete right turn from actually the path that the brand was was taking it normally is reaffirming what they're looking to do as opposed to just completely blue sky so very very seldomly do brands uh, say this isn't what we were expecting at all <laughs> we want a different outcome <laughs> Okay, so tell us about the the business structure of Pure Profile, the areas that it operates in. As a company, we're Australian founded 23 years ago. Today we operate in 10 countries. We just opened Indonesia uh, about a month or so ago. Um, For us, still Australia is the largest market and the real opportunity is overseas, especially in the UK and the US. UK market is 14 times bigger than the Australian market. And the US market is 40 times bigger than the Australian market. So big opportunities. We have very low market share. Our UK business is growing at double the rate of our Australian business. We expect UK revenue to overtake Australian revenue at the end of a run rate at the end of financial year 24. And we expect in financial year 25 run rate, the US to overtake Australia. So Quite quickly in the last three years, we've moved Pure Profile from being Australian centric to being truly global. And what do we do that all around? We do that all around really online surveys and insights. Mm. That makes up about 80% of our revenue. And then the other 20% of our revenue is in our SaaS platforms, which again is delivering insights. So what we do is- So just, just to, for listeners, that's software mm. as a service. So basically clients can go in and use the SaaS interface, the, the interface that you provide. Is that correct? Exactly. Higher margin. Uh, you don't need people. Um, mm. It's more scalable. SaaS technology is infiltrating everything that we do today. Yep. Uh, yeah. and just every, about every interface you see on the web is a SaaS kind of platform for whatever you might be doing and um, yeah so tell us about that in in terms of pure profile correct so 20 percent SaaS platform 80 percent doing surveys around the world the SaaS platform has three main products in it first one is insights builder so uh, diy tools i can run my own surveys if i'm budget director door beauty and others i can go in and build my own surveys second product is called audience intelligence that curates anonymous data of 400,000 Australians 
their daily credit card and bank account expenditure, but it's all anonymous data. And that enables organizations to understand uh, how they're doing against competitors in different postcodes, in different genders, ages, etc. That is uh, certainly where we talked earlier about trigger research. I can see somebody has just use JB Hi-Fi or Bingley or whatever, and I can immediately deliver them a survey else about their experience. Why did they use that versus somebody else? Mm. And then the third offering in our SaaS products is called Audience Builder. That's the real secret source within Pure Profile, and that enables large companies like Flybys to deliver surveys to their audience and and we work with flybys news court raise aa smart fuel we just shine uh, shot back we have 30 million members uh, across asia we've got a really large partnership going live in the us in june and uh, also a, a partnership in the uk so they're our first proper outside of australia new zealand partnerships and basically it enables audiences to do surveys and so why do brands like flybys do it well firstly engagement so i can be on the flybys app and i can shop in coles or i can take a credit card or insurance or i can run surveys to earn points so that's an engagement flybys gain insights so i can understand more about my users to give them a better experience and then thirdly we do a revenue share with the the third party nobody else in the world does it the way we do it with audience builder so in a world where there is more research than there are people to do the research um, the world needs more high quality individuals to do surveys audience builder is is filling that gap so we're really excited about that product and that's the one that we've seen our, our SaaS platform the year to date's up 17 percent and last year it was up about 100 percent that's driven by our audience builder product so that's really exciting but everything we do is around insights it's around companies being able to understand their their users better so to understand a little bit of data our revenue is up 26 percent year over year our ebitda is up 28 percent uh, year over year and then if we look at APAC it's up 20% uh, UK EU US up 41% and SAS up 17% so in these uncertain economic times that's great for market research because brands want to understand more about the users what are they concerned about what are their challenges to either keep or win consumers and then as a company we must be doing something right we know we're doing lots of things right <laughs> because we're actually winning market share and growing in a market where others are struggling. So really excited about how we're doing as a business. And presumably governments would um, require a lot more of this information in tough times as well, because they, they need to know which way to turn. The one constant in the world is change. So if you've got, we, we just had budget, so governments would, in here in Australia, governments would conduct research six months beforehand, understanding what the key thing about voters or their, their voters and liberal votes are to understand what they should focus on on the budget as well as what's needed in the market. We've got the voice coming up. And I think we saw in the budget that $330 million has been earmarked for that referendum. There will be a great deal of research from both the yes campaign and the no campaign to understand what the um, key messages should be to have people vote no or yes and then before we know it there will be round to election cycle again so once again all the key parties will be looking to understand their constituents and and, and uh, opposition constituents for the right messaging so it's a it's a continual thing within any business but especially within the government and is audience builder something that you are taking to international markets and it's something that doesn't exist in other markets. Is that the case? Absolutely. Yeah. So the way that it works and the way we partner with big brands, nobody, uh, uh, big membership companies, nobody else does it in the same way. And that's where we are seeing our, our growth come from. So the for us, the breakout will be the US. We're only doing about $3 million or so, maybe $4 million or so this year in the US in a market that's worth in excess of $6 billion. So huge opportunity and Audience Builder is our secret source to entry. So 
a large partner. We're starting to go live within June. They're about 114 million members in the US. Um, that's a large base to go out and build panel from. That would be especially about social impact and, and social challenges people face. And that's what uh, the company does. And then we're talking to other partners about launching speciality panels that are filling in gaps that aren't covered by the mainstream in the US. And even a small niche offering in the US is bigger than the whole Australian market. Um, what we need to be really cautious about, as we've always done, we are operating cash flow positive. We've been operating cash flow positive for the best part of three years. And so all of our investments, whether it's technology investments, uh, new market investments, new product investments, people investments, is all within our cash flow. We don't want to raise money to keep the lights on. Uh, and so that's been really important to us. So even going out into the US, a big market, we're not looking at spending a huge amount of money doing that. We'll do that with the partner. It therefore doesn't cost us any money up front. We do a back end revenue share and the opportunity is huge. So low cost entry into a market 40 times bigger than Australia. If listeners want to find out more about Pure Profile, where can they find you? What's the code and um, the website? Yep, the code is PPL. Um, the website is business.pureprofile.com or just pureprofile.com. And then you can go to the business section. Uh, obviously, find out more about the company all our reports etc um, and also we're always happy to answer any questions that people may have so please send those through to phil or contact us directly and we'll see if we can help you martin thank you very much for joining me today thank you very much phil the company and or guest has contributed to the cost of production for this episode thanks for listening to shares for beginners you can find more at sharesforbeginners.com If you enjoy listening, please take a moment to rate or review in your podcast player or tell a friend who might want to learn more about investing for their future. With Staples Business Advantage, you get the benefit of thousands of experts. Plus optimizations powered by the latest technological innovations. One plus one equals two. Three. Whatever. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human.